guys and welcome to today's video where I'll be showing you how to get unshed skin off of your gecko's toes because this is the most common place it gets stuck it's incredibly frustrating for you and the gecko so here's how to do it at home with ease I did a video on this a similar video back in 2013 and it's so old now looking back um, it wasn't too good Um, they usually twitch their feet a lot. But hopefully at the time it helped you guys out and hopefully now I can give you a fresh perspective on this little job. So all you'll need for this is some sort of shallow dish, um, ideally bigger than your gecko. Then what I like to do is put some kitchen roll at the bottom, this just helps them feel quite stable, prevents them from slipping and then add lukewarm water into the bottom. This only has to cover their feet, nothing more. Um, if they have some on their belly, it's okay to go up to their belly, but you do not want it to be deep. You can take the temperature, that might be ideal, so to check that it's not too hot or too cold. I now kind of do it by hand. I know I can feel that it's warm, but it's not burning. Some people ask whether you have to do this after every single shed, because some people do. You really don't. If you get all the skin off, if your gecko naturally gets all the skin off, you don't have to shed them. Some reptiles do benefit from it, it can help hydrate them, but don't feel like you have to bath them after every single shed. I have seen a few times online that people will put them in these boxes um, that's extremely humid. Um, they put them on top of a heat mat and the gecko can't really escape from it. I'm not sure exactly how safe that is. I feel like it would create too much humidity and could be bad for their respiratory system. Um, personally, I wouldn't do it. I prefer this way out in the open air. Um, so, you know, you can do what you like, but personally, I just, I wouldn't do that. The gecko I'm using today, as you can probably tell, is Gizmo. She has quite a bit of stuck shed on her feet, so she is the ideal example for this video. So let's just pop Gizmo in here. Now, don't be surprised if you put your gecko in here and they're not overly happy. The best thing I've found is something like this size is much better. If it's too small, they will just instantly try to climb out. Obviously, as I said, it is best to check the temperature is correct so your gecko is totally safe and isn't burning. So what we do now is just leave her in here just for, it doesn't even have to be that long, like maybe 30 seconds. And this will actually soak the skin really well and it should come off all in one piece. The problem when you try to take it off when it's dry is it will flake, it will just peel off in little bits and you get really awkward bits. So we're hoping this will help. Now, of course there are other options out there, like there is, I believe, the Zoomed Shedding Aid. There's also Arcadia's Shed Support. Both of them you can actually use together if you want. Um, this is if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have anything, um, and, okay, you go, <laughs> you don't have anything and you want to help get your gecko's skin off because obviously you don't want to leave it if you leave it what happens is with every shed it gets it gets tighter on the skin and that can actually cut off circulation and that's when you find that geckos start losing toes and even entire limbs and some geckos are actually lost bits of tail um, and it can really really deform them so this is why it's so important and this is probably one of the most frustrating parts of having a leopard gecko is trying to get their skin off now, when you go to peel this off, you can use tweezers, though I do find there's a slight disconnect between obviously your hand and your tweezers, so you don't always know if you're getting the right piece of skin and everything. What I tend to use is my nails. That is why they're actually long. I hate having long nails, and it's probably the only reason I've let them grow is to help actually get this off. Um, of course, you can use Q-tips, uh, cotton buds, they're also known as, um, they can help peel it, but ultimately what I always use is my nails because it really, really helps. So this is probably going to be the most difficult part to film because I am focusing more on her rather than what I'm actually filming. So if we can get her to stay still, she seems pretty comfortable in that water, so it was a good temperature. So now I'll try to film this as well as I can we get her to stay still let's like if we look at this little one here she has like an extra toe if we just use my nail oh it's popped off now 
I don't know how in focus that was, but every gecko is going to react different and every toe is different. For example, the worst place they can get to like skin stuck on their toes is this back toe and she happens to have this. So it's the inner back toe here and they hate this being touched. They will flick their little back leg, they're like no get off me. However, if I can do this quickly, it's very fiddly, it can take time, you need to be patient with this. Um, I have to get in here, <laughs> this will take a while. Get onto that toe. Oh, here we go. Pop off. That was actually a lot easier. Some of them, like here's another toe. They do hate their back toes being touched. There you go. Another one is this toe here. Sometimes when you touch it, they'll you'll feel their tail come towards you and they'll just flick it around. I will say the um, most annoying part is when you haven't quite tamed your gecko and you have to do this. I have the benefit that he's most pretty tame, but even she doesn't really like this. So once again, we get the skin, and it's it normally comes off in one piece. Now it's been wet, so it's a lot easier. And I believe that it's probably not as uncomfortable for the gecko because the skin's nice and hydrated. I'm gonna pull it off again. If you feel like this is taking a lot longer than you expected and the toes start to dry, you can dip them back in the water, just make sure it's still nice and warm. So now to check her next foot. Another inside toe is not a favourite for a gecko. So just peel it down. And this is why I prefer my nails over tweezers, because I can feel it more. I know I'm not applying too much pressure. But let's pull it off. They might make a little squeak sound they're obviously not totally happy but at the end of the day it's one of those things where you've got to do it it's in their best interest to do it and even if this takes an hour whatever out of your day it's sort of your job as the owner to take care of your gecko and you know if they do tend to get if they get really frustrated and you're like okay they're not having this Give them a rest, put them back in and try again later. It's just important that you do get this off. Now, if when you're doing this, a nail comes off and it starts bleeding, it will grow back. Um, obviously, make sure that the open wound is kept clean. This happened to Diego once on his own wind shedding and um, it grew back within the month. Obviously, around the nails, you want to be delicate. This is the thing. If you're using tweezers, you don't want to be clipping down on the nails because that will, like, break them. But I believe that after a while, they do naturally shed, so you might get ones that come out a little bit. This one... Is this one bleeding? No, it might just be a bit of dirt. Um, but, yeah, some of them will come out on their own. So don't worry too much. It will grow back. But it looks like we've got that all off, and that really didn't take too long. So since it's still quite warm, I've just popped her back in there just to refresh her little toes. She might have a little drink, that will be totally fine. You can also do this with your crested gecko. I think a lot of reptiles you can do this with. Just make sure the temperature isn't too hot or too cold. Um, and the skin comes off fairly easy. I've done loads of different videos on shedding. I should probably actually make a playlist of it on its own um especially ones where you get skin stuck on the head that is tricky maybe one day if i ever have this situation again i might show you how to jot on the tail because when i first got mini she had so many problems with shedding with her tail and she wasn't properly tame and she was a baby and at that time i was convinced that if i touched the tail it would drop off uh we got through it and luckily without any of my other geckos i've never had that problem again but just when it comes to shedding skin, keep on top of it, otherwise it just gets worse and worse. So I hope this video has helped. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye. They also eat the skin, which is completely normal. Um, so he's not quite ready to shed. Um, you can tell when they're ready to shed because the skin in their ears sort of pop out. Oh, I got a bit off. Maybe I'll be